Hare Krishna. We continue reading from Nectar of Devotion. We finish the introduction uh, yesterday by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada. And now we are going to continue with Chapter 1. Uh, we were hearing about pure devotional service in short. In this chapter, we are going to hear about it in detail. Characteristics of pure devotional service. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, 29th chapter, verses 12 and 13, Srila Kapiladev, while instructing his mother, has given the following characteristics of pure devotional service. So in Kapila Shiksha, which is coming in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 29th chapter, verses 12 and 13. Um, this in this section of the Bhagavatam, Lord Kapila Dev is instructing his mother, and what has he said about pure devotional service? He says, My dear mother, those who are my pure devotees and who have no desire for material benefit or philosophical speculation and have their minds so much engaged in my service that they're never interested in asking me for anything except to be engaged in that service. They do not even beg to live in my abode with me. So Lord Kapila Dev is an incarnation of Krishna and he's giving transcendental knowledge to his mother and he's speaking to his mother about pure devotional service. And he's telling his mother about the consciousness of the pure devotee. What is the pure devotee doing? The pure devotee is so blissful, so happy, engaged, uh, engaging in serving the Supreme Lord that he does not ask the Lord for anything except to be engaged in service. That's all he wants. Uh, he, they do not even beg to live in my own, my abode with me. It means they're not asking for liberation. They don't want to go. Philosophical speculation means the impersonal liberation. They don't have. They don't want that. They don't want any anything to any enjoyment in the material world on the material platform. They don't even want to go to Vaikuntha. What are they asking? engage in devotional service. This is pure devotional service. Now we have to understand, engaging in pure devotional service means already being with Krishna. It's already having liberation. It's already living with Krishna. So it includes everything. It, it's, it's, it's higher. It's liberation and beyond. You know, so because the, the devotee is getting all the bliss that would be he would be getting from the lower lower um, engagements so he doesn't need anything else he has the highest pure devotional service means he is with krishna his consciousness is with krishna and there are five kinds of liberation uh, namely to become one with the lord to live with the supreme lord on the same planet to have the same features as the Lord, to enjoy the same opulences as the Lord, and to live as a companion of the Lord. A devotee, what to speak of rejecting material sense gratification, does not even want any of these of the five kinds of liberation. He is satisfied simply by discharging loving service to the Lord. That is the characteristic of pure devotion. So we can try to understand how much bliss there is in this pure devotion. Otherwise, why will someone say, I don't even want to go to the Brahma Jyoti. I don't want to live on the same planet or you. I don't want to look the same like you. I don't want to have the same riches as you. I don't want to live as your companion. But what I want, I want to continuously engage in your service. This is what the pure devotee is asking. So he's already feeling the highest bliss. That's why he's able to ask this. So we can see the supermost excellent position of pure devotional service. It's even higher than any kind of liberation. The, the joy, the happiness that a living entity feels when he's engaged in pure devotional service surpasses the happiness that he feels when he is having any of the five kind of liberation. That's the reason he's able to ask. We are all pleasure seeking. 
We, none of us want to suffer. None of us want to feel unhappy. And we want to feel the highest pleasure. So we can see here that how can we feel the highest pleasure? By engaging in pure devotional service. It's not a platform of, um, what do you say, deprivement or, or unhappiness or, sur or suffering or manipulation. No, it's a platform of the highest bliss. The highest bliss. And that's the reason the devotee is asking the Lord, my dear Lord, you please just engage me in your pure devotional service. And even a desire to engage in pure devotional service to the Lord is pure devotional service. Because pure devotional service, as we will read on, Krishna does not give very easily. He does not very easily give pure devotional service. Why? Because he becomes purchased by the devotee. Then he becomes a servant of the devotee, like he became servant of Arjuna, becoming his chariot driver. You know, he becomes the servant. He starts doing things for the devotee. So he's very, he does not give it very easily. Um, what Lord Chaitanya in his Shikshastakam, he says that, na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagat isha kami mama janmani janme ishwere bhavatad bhaktir ahay toki tvai. Lord Chaitanya in the Shikshastakam, he is telling us the mood of the pure devotee. The pure devotee is telling Krishna, I do na dhanam na janam na sundarim. I do not need any amount of wealth. I do not need any followers. I do not need any beautiful women. What do I want? Is that I want to be engaged in your service, birth after birth after birth after birth. This is the prayer of the pure devotee. Because he's feeling so much bliss. He's with Krishna. We have to understand pure devotion is to Krishna. So the devotee is with Krishna when he's engaging in pure devotional service. He's experiencing the highest bliss, the highest pleasure that he can. In the above statement by Kapila Dev from Srimad Bhagavatam, the actual position of a pure devotee is described. And the primary characteristics of devotional service are also defined. Further characteristics of devotional service are described by Rupa Goswami with evidences from different scriptures. Now, why does a devotee say that he just wants pure devotional service? What happens? It's because of these characteristics. So, Srila Prabhupada is saying that uh, the primary characteristics Kapila, Lord Kapila Dev is giving already, and here uh, Rupa Goswami adds and gives us the further characteristics. And there are six characteristics of pure devotional service. Because of this pure six characteristics, the pure devotional service is so special. One, pure devotional service brings immediate relief from all kinds of material distress. So there is material distress in the material world. We have been hearing that right from the ant to Brahmaji, all our places of misery, not that only if somebody is very rich or very beautiful, they are not suffering. No, even if we go to the planet of the demigods, they're suffering. Indra, he's always so scared that the demons are going to take him out of his throne, and which many times they do. And then there's wars, there's fighting happening. So there is distress in the material world at all levels. In pure devotional service immediately removes all kinds of material distress means it's already on the liberated platform, means the modes of nature are not affecting the devotee. So pure devotional service is beginning from the Brahma Bhuta platform, from the platform of Brahman. Yeah, that's the reason Krishna says in the 18th chapter that, uh, what's that? Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma na sochati na kangshati sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labate para. From the liberated platform, begins pure devotional service. So that's the first thing, imagine. And there's further things to go on. So liberation is the first thing that happens. Relief from all kinds of material distress. But what is the further? It's the beginning of all auspiciousness. 
Everything that the devotee does is auspicious. Everything. All his thoughts, his words, his actions, everything is auspicious for everyone. Not only himself, but for everyone. Automatically puts one in transcendental pleasure. The, the devotee starts feeling a, a pleasure which is beyond the material pleasure. What we have experienced here in the material world is only material pleasure. But the devotee is experiencing spiritual pleasure, spiritual happiness. Then pure devotional service is rarely achieved. Very rare. Krishna does not give it easily. Those in pure devotional service deride even the conception of liberation. Now because the devotee is experiencing much higher pleasure in his situation, he does not want only liberation. He does not, and there is no Krishna, there is no service in the Brahman. And so the devotee does not want that. He wants to serve Krishna. He wants to be with Krishna. He does not just want to sit in the Brahman and do nothing. And pure devotional service is the only means to attract Krishna. So if this is the way to attract Krishna, pure devotional service. Krishna is all attractive, but pure devotional service attracts him. This means that pure devotional service is even transcendentally stronger than Krishna himself because it is Krishna's internal potency. Krishna is God. There is no one equal to him. There is no one greater than him. No one can conquer Krishna. But yet Krishna gets conquered by the pure love of his devotees. So pure devotional service is even stronger than Krishna on the transcendental platform. Not material. This is all on the transcendental platform. On the platform of love. Krishna, the, the devotee loves Krishna so much that Krishna gets purchased by the love. Pure devotional service is on the realm of Krishna's spiritual energy, internal potency, Srimati Radharani. This month is her month. Every month has a presiding deity. Kartik month, Srimati Radharani is the queen of this month. And we can pray to her to engage us in devotional service to Krishna. And the pray. The, the, the best way to pray to Srimati Radharani to engage us in service of Krishna is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, where we are appealing to Srimati Radharani to engage us in the service of Krishna. So the more we can chant, the better. The constant chanting, constant chanting. It is pure devotional service. So we'll stop here for today. Were there any questions or comments? We're going to be reading more in detail about these characteristics, these six characteristics that we just briefly described. There is detailed description about it. So, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for listening and 